Hello and welcome back to part two of this School of Surgery podcast, Fundamentals of Arterial Blood Gases. Again, I'm joined by Dr. Tim Watkins, who's a consultant anaesthetist from Royal Derby Hospital. Hello, Tim. Hello. This second podcast is going to cover the learning objectives of how to actually interpret an arterial blood gas. We're going to provide a five-step approach that's commonly used and then discuss some simple cases. So... I've got my arterial blood gas result, successfully put it through the machine, um, and then I'm left with an, a bunch of numbers. Um, so the question is really, where do I start with this? I think, I mean, there are, there are lots of different ways of looking at ABGs. Um, the, the ALS suggestions are probably relatively sound, um, and they certainly allow you to focus on the patient uh, first off, which, you know, otherwise... An ABG is ultimately just a set of numbers. It may be contaminated. The machine may have made a false reading. Uh, you may have had to wait for ages before it was put into the machine, and therefore the values changed. So you should always, as with pretty much everything in clinical medicine, start with your assessment of the patient, including their history and actual clinical presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, having done that, you can then use that impression that you've formed to move forward. And as, again, said previously, the, the most life-threatening issue with the majority of ABGs is um, about the level of oxygenation of the patient, which you can only really assess if you know what the patient is breathing in terms of what percentage oxygen they're breathing. Hence, you mentioned about the Venturi um, effect and and the the masks and different FiO2s you can deliver. So you check your patient, you check your oxygenation, and then eventually you can get into the nitty-gritty of whether or not they've got an acidemia or an alkalemia, which is purely what the pH um, says it should be on the the blood gas result. Having done that, the most common simple way is to assess to see whether or not they have a respiratory component to whatever that pH is by seeing whether or not the um, carbon dioxide is either raised or, or lower than normal and then you do the same thing from a metabolic perspective looking at bicarbon or base excess. Okay, so uh, before you've gone all through all five of those, you can't really say the final diagnosis. And no, and I mean it, it does depend why you are doing the the uh, blood gas in the first instance. So, for instance, there could be a scenario, in, for instance, in theatre where you have a patient who's who's had a, a a large blood loss, and you want to do a blood gas to see what their hemoglobin is. So you may already have confirmed that the other aspects of their blood gas are likely to be satisfactory. So you may therefore choose to look at the haemoglobin, or it may be that you have a hyperkalemic patient and you need to look at the um, the potassium first, but that all really revolves around how the patient is in the first place, because that will then direct you to what you need to look at. Mm, okay. So if we could just walk, work through some examples. Um, example one is a patient that's been to theatre and they've been put on, on a PCA pump, pump for pain relief. Um, and they've come back to the ward and they've used it slightly too much uh, and find themselves with a bit of respiratory depression and difficult to arouse. The SpO2 is only 88%, so use the junior have run off and done an ABG and these are the results. Could you just talk me through how you'd interpret these? Well, I think, first of all, you <clears throat> putting this into the clinical scenario, you can almost predict what potentially may occur. That isn't to say you should close your eyes to other, other potential diagnoses. This is a blood gas of a patient who you will probably expect of having some form of opiate overdose, um, bearing in mind the clinical history. So you've got his oxygenation uh, from his saturations, but you need to confirm that on his uh, blood gas. And you can see down here that it's, his PaO2 is 10. That matches give or take, to uh, sats of um, 88. So it, it, they're not very good, but it's equally well potentially not life-threatening at this moment. Next, you move on to assess his uh, pH, which is an acidemia of 7.25. So what's causing that? Moving on, you look at the respiratory components. So his PaCO2 is 7.5, which is raised, so he's got a respiratory alkalosis causing a respiratory um, acidemia. This isn't complete without assessing to see whether or not he has a metabolic component to to his situation, as he may do, but the bicarb is um, 25, which is within the normal range. So all things being equal, this gentleman 
his ABG fits with his clinical picture and he has yet not had chance to change his bicarb level to compensate for his respiratory acidosis. Okay, so putting all those things together, uh, you agree this case is a respiratory acidosis? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, example two is a young female woman brought into A&E with a suspected panic attack. She's very anxious uh, and has been hyperventilating. Um, her ABG is, is below. So again, you know, look at the clinical picture. You probably again can suspect what may be um, occurring and what may be seen on the ABG. However, you don't know why she's behaving in the way that she's behaving. She may have an underlying reason as to why she looks as though she's having a panic attack and maybe something else occurring. So <clears throat> that's your clinical picture. Is the patient safe? So what's their oxygen level? PA2 of uh, PaO2 of 11, that's, that's a, a good oxygen level. Are they um, affected from the point of view of their pH? Yes, they are. They're alkalemic. So why is that? Is it because of a respiratory or a metabolic problem? So the PaO2, next thing to look at, is low. It's on the low, low side, which is probably, therefore, simply the fact that she's blown off her CO2 to cause an alkaline, alkalemia resulting in an alkalosis. Sorry, alkalosis <laughs> resulting in an alkalemia. Obviously, this isn't complete. The assessment of her blood gas until you look at the bicarb. Bicarb is basically within normal range as well. So that fits with the opposite of what we saw previously. So this would be a respiratory alkalosis. Okay. And the last case we're going to consider is uh, a type 1 diabetic um, presenting to A&E, um, having feeling poorly uh, after running out of his insulin. Um, and this is his arterial blood gas. So again, you've, you've painted a picture, which is you know absolutely important so to do. Um, some pictures are much more complicated, but that type of person, you go through the same steps. Are they safe? What's their oxygen level? So 10.9 as a PaO2 is basically not going to kill you, so you would hope. It's on the lower side of normal, but it's, it's, it's relatively safe. So what's their pH doing? Well, the pH is showing that they've got an acidemia. So what's the cause of, the cause of that? Well, is it respiratory? So the PaCO2 is, is low. So it's not that they have a respiratory um, cause to their acidemia. They have compensation potentially, but they don't have the, um, the cause of their acidemia being respiratory. So you move on to the metabolic assessment and the bicarbonate is low. So that is in keeping with a metabolic acidosis, uh, metabolic acidemia. Okay, so this person's got a metabolic acidosis, uh, but also their PA, uh, CO2 is low. So am I right in thinking that they're trying to compensate with their respiratory system to blow off some CO2? Yeah. So the respiratory system is um, relatively capable of, of, of changing quickly in terms of it can um, attempt to hyperventilate to blow off carbon dioxide within a relatively short time scale in an attempt to try and maintain pH neutrality. So yeah, blowing off your CO2 will reduce your pH and you breathe more. Okay. To complete this podcast series, we'll just summarise what we've learnt. Firstly, we've covered how to interpret your arterial blood gas report. Secondly, we've covered the five-step approach, which just to recap, is to always assess your patient first check their oxygenation, determine the pH, and then determine whether there's a respiratory component or a metabolic component before making your final diagnosis. We then applied that to some simple cases. So thank you very much, Dr. Watkins. My pleasure.